What is up, Poppy fans in the Ring Army? My name is Nice, they're Anthony, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I am here bringing you all a new podcast slash interview with the mob employee. You know him, you love him. I am interviewing Tyler, mob's community manager. After many years of begging, he agreed to hop on to give us a fun listen and more of his lore. Just a heads up, his audio does sometimes glitch out and some words tend to go missing halfway through his answers. I have no idea on how to fix that. I'm sure it's an OBS problem. So I apologize in advance. Before we get into that, if you are a fan of Poppy Playtime and want more fun stuff like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on to not miss any Sigma video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode and make sure to like to show support. Thank you. To start this off, I want to thank you, Tyler, for finally hopping on here. I'm looking forward to what you have to answer and to hopefully learn more about you today. What do you mean, finally? Wow, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I'm excited to be here, man. Uh, and thank you for asking me to, to hop on here and uh, chat with you a little bit. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And I have some questions for you here. Number one being, what was your first task when you first started working at Mob? What wasn't my first task when I started working for Mob? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> so I started working for Mob. What was it? Like, like I think my work anniversary, actually, like at the time of this recording, uh, like us recording right now, I think my work anniversary is in like maybe a week. Um, and I remember my first day, I, I sat down with my my boss and he was just like, hey, so I just also started a month ago. So we're kind of in this together. And I was like, sick. What do you need me to do? He's like, kind of a little bit of everything here. Here's a laundry list. And so... <laughs> Uh, I, I kind of sat down and, and you know, obviously, I, I'm sure a lot of people remember that before me, there was a community manager who um, who handled a lot of you guys before. And so a lot of it was just kind of going back and looking at what he did and um, and seeing, you know, what pieces were, were left off after his departure and, and what I can pick up and, and, and fix. And one of those things was the, the, the Partners in Crime program. Obviously, you know, that's how you and I met and I's and, uh, and kind of getting that back to new people kind of um piecing it back together because between uh him and i um the project manager k uh was was kind of managing it because she really wanted it to stay together and man did she work really hard to keep it together so i really appreciate k keeping the partners in crime going while we were waiting for a new community manager to start so partners in crime was like my biggest thing and then outside of that i had to like pick up our tools and uh that included everything from twitter instagram facebook youtube we wanted to like launch TikTok and do Twitch and all this other crazy stuff. And I was like, you know, we, we need to take baby steps. I'm one person. <laughs> <laughs> so it was also, you know, getting acquainted with the discord staff and making sure that I knew everybody there. And it was a nuts uh, kind of first couple of weeks trying to sort everything out. But uh, once I had my, my, my hands on the, on the reins, we kind of hit the ground running. And I think we, you know, on top of that, we're, we were launching the project playtime. Um, the, the, what was that? The third, uh, phase three. Yep. Uh, the third phase. And then right on top of that, also looking towards the, the trailers dropping for chapter three, because we hadn't done anything but teasers up until that point. So everything was coming in hot, man. Uh, <laughs> And so if, if I probably looked like a crazy person in those first like two months where I was just kind of like running around. Um, but I think once we got our footing, we, we started doing some really cool stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. And we appreciate everything that you've done, even to right now, of course. The community always, lo always loves it when you get on the server and to see what you have to see online. And that brings me to my next question. When you're about to announce something to the Poppy Playtime community, whether on Twitter or on Discord, do you ever feel nervous on how people will react to whatever the announcement is? You know, I used to necessarily with, with Poppy Playtime specifically, but I, I've been a community manager now for like 10 years. And so I feel, oh God, I just aged myself. Uh, so I feel <laughs> like, you know, when I was, when I was a little bit younger, a little more green, um, yeah, I used to be get, get get really nervous because a lot of the stuff I took super personally. You know, like you're building out these campaigns and you want to make sure these announce go perfectly, and it never does. It like literally never does. 
Um, so it, you, yeah, when I first started, I used to get really nervous, but I think Poppy Playtime specifically, um, the community has been super receptive to almost everything, you know, you know there's always going to be a vocal minority here and there of, of some negative naysayers, but you know, for the most part, I feel like every time we make an announcement, there's just an overwhelming love coming from the community of, of what we do. And I think that's just, you know, because of the passion and, and the love that we put into the stuff that we do, we want to make sure we do it right. We want to make sure we do it, you know, as cleanly as possible um, with the little hiccups here and there, because it's never going to be perfect. But uh, I don't think I get, I don't get too nervous anymore. I don't think. Yeah. I remember some tweets that either you or Amanda tweeted out before and there were some mistakes and you have to, you know, re upload them. You know, people are like saying, or people sometimes ask whenever you or someone, you know, deletes a post, um, people just make a big deal on, on Discord, like saying, Oh, they deleted the post. Why did they make a mistake or whatever? And, you know, it's not, it's not a big deal, but it's just something that the community likes to point out sometimes whenever a, a oops happens on a post. Oh, yeah, there was a, I remember, I think I know specifically which post you're talking about. There was like a, an art uh, that Amber had drawn uh, and it had her, her watermark. And I had forgotten to tell Amanda, hey, don't upload, don't upload the one with the watermark from Amber. Upload the one without the watermark and then. After it already went up, I was like, oh, crap, we need to take this down. <laughs> um, but it, it ended up working out. So, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's a crazy, it's a crazy world back here behind the, the veil. Uh, if you ever get to see it, you'll be like, how, how, how does anyone in here function? <laughs> but it's, right. it's, a, it's a fun mess to be in. It's chaotic and I thrive in chaos, as a lot of you already know. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of posts, uh, what do you think? <laughs> okay, what do you think about the same questions that are being asked constantly on announcement posts? For example, like when's Chapter Three Mobile or Project Playtime update? When you know? <laughs> so I get it. You know, <laughs> no, it's it's super funny that you mentioned this because as a, as a community manager and you know being on a on a community and social team, part of me and Amanda's responsibilities is to look at those comments and report those back to the team. Um, especially if it's something that comes up frequently um, from multiple different people and multiple di different you know platforms and stuff like that. If it's if it's something that's continuously being talked about in the community, me and Amanda try to report it to the appropriate you know team. And literally, those two things are like always there, always there. And so we hear you. I, I get it. Um, and if that's something you want, like I encourage the community as a, as a matter of fact, to continue to ask for those things in our posts, because that's how, that's how your voice is heard. Like if you repeat yourself, like I know there's some people in the comments who are like, you know, stop, shut up. Like it's never going to happen or like you're bothering them and stuff like that. No, I think quite the opposite. It's like, that's how, that's how those things happen. Um, making your voice heard is the step one of getting something implemented that you want. Um, and so I'm really appreciative to the people who do that because they're just vocalizing what they want out of, you know, something that they love. And I think that goes a long way. Um, and so, you know, maybe one day chapter three will be a mobile and maybe one day, maybe <laughs> let me, let me start this by saying, this is my own opinion and not mob entertainment's opinion, <laughs> but <laughs> Maybe someday Project Playtime will get an update. We'll see. And also, a misconception. I'm not a dev. <laughs> I just make social and run our marketing programs. So I'm not a dev either, guys. There's some people who actually believe I'm a dev. Like, no That's joke. So <laughs> You're part of the Partners in Crime program. Obviously, you develop every single game. Right, obviously. You guys can stop editing me, because I already know. <laughs> And you're also saying that I can continue being a annoying person about project, right? <laughs> okay, so well, I need to make an amendment to that statement. I think everybody can state what they want except Nized. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, I'm <laughs> special, guys. See, they want me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. Of course, you can continue to vocalize. I, I love watching your um, your Project Playtime videos of like suggestions and stuff. I send those over to the devs every time you make one. So Yeah, I have a lot more coming planned oh great <laughs> i have a lot planned <laughs> and speaking of project what do you think about the current state of the game you know it's uh it, it's sad because and it's also kind of difficult for me to really voice an opinion about this too because of my position in the company but i really wish that there was a way to continue developing 
uh, Project Playtime easily. You know, like I wish there was just like a like an easy button for for game development. You know, press make. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish that we could, um, you know, re- revitalize it and breathe some fresh air into it. Um, but it's not as easy as as it. You know? so right now, as as Project Playtime stands, I'm I'm not super, you know, happy with it on a personal standpoint. Um, and you know, I'm fighting behind the scenes to to really move the needle on that. But you know, it's not it's not an easy task, and. <laughs> I, on, I, I'm really struggling to answer this question, by the way. Thanks, nice. <laughs> I have another one, too, so don't worry. Oh, I'm so excited for that one. No, I'm just kidding. No, for real, though. It's, uh, it's, um, it's tough. It's really tough because I started in October right when Project Playtime was getting its third phase. Like, I think my second week of me being at Mob was when Phase 3 came out. And I remember in my first week of being at Mob, being in meetings about Project Playtime, being like, watch this thing, and we're really going to push hard that, like, we updated this thing, and we updated that thing. And, like, coming into this, like, I didn't really know what Project Playtime was. Like, I knew what Poppy Playtime Chapters 1 and 2, but I didn't know what Project Playtime was. Um, Like, my introduction to it was, like, this meeting. And so I didn't realize it was already a game that was out, because it wasn't really, like, marketed alongside Chapter 1 and 2. No. Um... I didn't really have a predetermined like expectation, I guess, for Project Playtime. And so I feel like a lot of my personal opinions have developed over time based off of how the community feels for it, because I obviously have the best interests of the community um, in, you know, in mind when I'm doing my job. And so, yeah, obviously now the game is going on close to a year without have re- receiving an update. And, you know... I really wish that we could, you know, push forward with giving another one, but you know, it is what it is as it is right now. So I can't really hold much more power other than vocalizing the stuff that you guys say in social and to me personally and on discord, since that's kind of my job on the assembly line of, of game development. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's kind of, I mentioned this to Toby. It's so impressive how, decently known project is and even some content creators including myself are still making content on the game even though there's like basically nothing that should be like a wake-up call right to mob saying like there's still a community here waiting for sure yeah yeah and that's kind of the thing that i've been alluding to is you know i've obviously hear you guys really vocalizing a love for for project playtime and it's really difficult because just because you know when you're in a community position, you know, you're hearing it a lot on social and you're hearing it a lot on Discord um, and you're hearing a lot from your partners. Um, but all of those people are the people who are hardcore fans and taking the time out of their day to engage with Poppy Playtime more so than a typical fan would. And so you really have to, from a business standpoint, crunch the numbers and be like, how how much is this going to impact bottom line, if that makes sense? And I hate that word because it's so like, or that phrase because it's so business sounding. Uh, maybe that's why I'm a community manager and not like a finance manager. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's like you really have to think about the business side of things too. And it's like, how much resource can we put into this? And, and what would that return be for us? Um, so what I'm trying hard to do behind the scenes, I guess, just to kind of peel the curtain back a little bit is prove that that worth, uh, both for the community and for the business at the same time. And that's honestly a really, probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do as a community manager. So I'm fighting the good fight for you guys. So we'll see what happens. (laughs) Keep fighting, keep fighting. We all believe in you. Thank you. (laughs) That brings me to my next question. I, I know you said that these are your opinions and everything, but would you say that Mob has completely forgotten about Project Playtime? I wouldn't say completely forgotten. Um, obviously, the game is still up, and you know there's still money being invested in that. Anything that the company invests money on, it's on their radar. Like that's how, that's that's how you know it's not forgotten. It's more so, I think, from from what you're trying to ask, probably is like has Mob forgotten? about uh about project playtime as a priority i don't know i don't know if i could honestly answer that yes or no (laughs) because i don't even know the answer to that um i can say me as mob like me as an employee of mob rather um i could say no i haven't forgotten about it and that's why i'm fighting for it um 
And I think there are people within the company like Toby and a few others who have uh, a passionate love for Project Playtime, either because they think it's a good idea and could do really well for the business and or worked on it and know that the community love it and they love it themselves. Um, so there are definitely people who love Project Playtime within Mob Entertainment, um, for sure, for sure. I'm very glad to hear that, and I bet a lot of fans are, will be glad to hear that as well. Because uh, I keep getting asked or people commenting saying, I think Mob has just completely ditched Project Playtime. And I, I always tell them, I don't think they have, they're just very busy with other with other things like Chapter 4, for example. I believe that's like the top priority right now. Project is just on the yeah. side. you know. So don't worry, I don't think they completely forgot about it you know it's just not as up there on the list right now to add some some context i guess to sprinkle a little context on you know project playtime's development cycle versus chapter chapters two and three so chapter two came out oh god was it 2022 i believe right and i think yeah the same year as project i believe was it may or october i think it was may i think it was may chapter two so this was all like pre Tyler. So this was just like me, like making stuff up, <laughs> but I do know after project or I'm sorry, after chapter two finished development, they went straight into project playtime, um, built that out. And while they were working on project playtime, they weren't working on, pro- on chapter three. Um, and that's why there was such a big development gap or I guess release gap between chap- chapters two and three. Um, and it, that's because all of the resources that were going to chapter two went to project dead and so chapter three's development didn't honestly start until may 2023 um and so that's when that split development went like half these people are working on uh, poppy playtime chapter three and then half the people were working on project playtime um and that's after phase three you know that's when we realized you know we need to have as many resources on chapter three as because we need to make sure this game gets out um and that's when we moved everyone over and i think after that, you know, and this is me guessing at this point, I don't actually know what, what went on behind the scenes after this, but we went straight into development for Chapter 4 after Chapter 3's release. You know, we, uh, I do know that after Chapter 3's release, there was a couple of, maybe like a month-ish dedicated to bug fixes and optimization and all that other stuff. But after that, dev team went heads down in, in uh, developing processes and making sure that things were like aligned and ready to go and they went straight into development for for chapter four um and it hasn't eased up since then uh and so because of that there's not really a wig a little bit of a wiggle room to allow for de- development on project playtime as it stands um and so we would love to get back to that it's just figuring out how do we divide up that development time or what resources do we need in order to make that go out the door and that's something that um, I'm really passionate about uh, working with the leadership team on. And so I hope that I can someday make some movement for you guys. Uh, but we'll see. Right. Uh, we'll keep on waiting. Don't worry. I think the probably play the community is patient, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're patient. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The community, they, they know. They know to wait. Next question is there any type of feedback for either the chapters or project that has been taken into consideration or that has been noted down? Either chapters or project that has been taken into consideration? Um, I would say yes. I mean, obviously part of my job, there's... I, I mean, I can't really say because of NDA what they specifically are, so yes. <laughs> but, um, you know, obviously part of my job is to listen to you guys and, and, and kind of report back on uh what you guys are talking about so that we can make really good educated decisions on what we're going to do in the games uh and in our marketing and stuff like that um like for example actually i can talk about this one like how robust we're making our ar right now is based off of feedback off the the chapter three arg and so i really went into this project because i didn't really get to have a really big part to play in the chapter three arg um that was all like Ben and Anthony, or no, it was Ben and Kay mostly, and Eric uh, from, like, the story team. Uh, But this time, you know, uh, Kay's kind of stepped away from the project. Now I'm kind of overseeing it. I want to make sure, you know, we need to step it up from the last one. And here's some feedback that we got from the community based off of our last ARG. And how can we make this, you know, a little more um, exciting? And that's why, 
you know, for example, we mailed out literally every single partner uh, in crime got a letter <laughs> for the ARG um, with a different <laughs> puzzle based on your read. Um, I wanted to make sure that every partner in crime felt included um, and, and uh, as a part of our, our ongoing Chapter 4 ca- uh, marketing campaign. And so it's like, what, what a cooler way to do it than with the ARG. And so I wanted to make sure that everyone, you know, I, I hand wrote and <laughs> highlighted all of those letters, all 125 of them. Rest in peace, your hands. <laughs> My hands don't exist anymore. I just kind of chop them off now. You know, I just have nothing there. But great sacrifice. <laughs> it was. It was. It was for the. You know, for for you guys. I wanted to make sure you felt included, and um, and I wanted to make sure that what we're doing with this ARG is just next level compared to what we did for the last one, and even for the one before that. Yeah, it's great. I can't wait to see what else you guys have in store for marketing. Oh, and there's a, a really big doozy one coming up. Uh, actually, it might have. Ha- it'll already happen after this airs. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah, we'll see. Next question: How do you feel about the community having a mixed reaction about the Nightmare Critters? Do you think the community has to not judge a book by its cover? I was very public with my opinion on this <laughs> on my Twitter account. <laughs> no, um, I think you know it. I understood um, where everyone was coming from, especially with the disappointment in in specifically with Baba Chops and um, how she was kind of put as a staple face on, you know, our Steam page and stuff like that. And there was a lot of assumptions going around that Baba Chops is the main antagonist of Chapter 4. I made sure to squash that immediately just because I didn't want that misconception spreading around. And I wanted to make sure people were excited about the Nightmare Critters, um, mostly because I think (laughs) I like them. I think they're really fun. But also as a child who grew up in the 90s, um, and I really enjoyed the kind of like trope that that drew from, uh, a lot of the cartoons and games from when I was a kid, uh, kind of, you know, echoed out of the nightmare critters. And so that's kind of why I felt that personal connection to them. And, uh, maybe I got a little hostile on my Twitter account, but, <laughs> but <laughs> <Give me a flashback. laughs> I, I was a little unhinged, but no, I, I genuinely understand, you know, where people are coming from when they say they, you know, they feel like a repeat of the smiling critters and, you know, that's because it's supposed to feel like that. Um, these, like, anti-versions of characters are almost like the the, the weird spin-offs, the, you know, the, the reverse ver- versions of them. Um, and that's kind of the, the air that we were going about uh, with the Nightmare Critters. And so, you know, I think there are a couple of people who, you know, genuinely don't like the designs, and that's fine. And there might be, you know, God forbid I bring up Poe right now, but there might be some people who don't like Poe because of, you know, their alignment with the LGBTQ uh, IA community. But, you know, we wanted to make sure that everybody had a little bit of represent- uh, representation in our game. And that's why Poe is the way they are. Um, and I hope that resonates with, with and, and they realize that that's for them and for no one else. Yeah, I agree. I even made a, a tweet about that saying like, I don't get the hate about it. It's supposed to be a character that most people or some people can relate to, you know, mm-hmm. I, I just, you know, don't see the point of hating on it. You know, if you don't like, sure. if you don't like the character, don't, you know, don't make a big deal about it. Who, you know, it doesn't really matter. But if you love the character, great, you know? Oh yeah. It's just a cartoon character. <laughs> I don't get the hate or like the big fights people are having over it. Yeah. I, I've really enjoyed, I think the thing that I've enjoyed the most out of the last, you know, couple of weeks of, of revealing the nightmare critters is people trying to align them with the smiling critters. And like, you know, Ma- uh, Maggie Mako aligns the most with picky piggy, icky licky lines up the most with hoppy hopscotch and like seeing those, um, those duality, like people kind of like matching them up with the smiling critters. I thought that was really entertaining. People trying to make the guesses. I don't even know what the actual lineup is supposed to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I can't confirm or deny if any of you are right or wrong, but it's been really fun to watch the speculation spin about it. Oh yeah, guys, keep at it. They enjoy, they enjoy your your shenanigans. Next question: Do you have a favorite Poppy Playtime chapter in general? Even if you have or haven't played it yourself? Uh, let's see. I think okay. I want to say my favorite is actually Chapter Two. Um, I really enjoy Long Legs as a character. I thought she was the most interesting voice. I guess not voice, but I mean, she's the only main antagonist with a voice, I guess. But I just thought her character was so unique and so interesting when I was applying for this job. 
And that was a really big reason why I went for it, because I knew that I could do some really fun stuff with social surrounding Mommy Long Legs. And actually, the one that I use for Mommy Long Legs that kind of like... <laughs> Uh, or sorry, for social. Um, the voice I use for social is kind of inspired by Mommy Long Legs, kind of like, um, I don't know, kind of like tongue in cheek, um, but mildly professional, mildly unprofessional, all lowercase letters, no punctuation, like heavily inspired by Mommy's uh, voice uh, with a little bit of spin of my own personality. So I think chapter two is my favorite, but I also want to give a shout out to chapter three for having baby Tyler. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you don't smack baby Tyler with the grab pack when you pass it and, and play care, then you actually lost Poppy Playtime chapter three. I'm sorry. Exactly. It's it's a must. Every time you see that picture, <laughs> you have to smack it. And apparently, apparently, allegedly, maybe Tyler's now in chapter two, according to Toby told me, but I don't know where it is, so now you gotta go and find it. <laughs> I don't know about right now. Or it's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. We're gonna have to be on the hunt for that picture then. <laughs> Wait, yeah, chapter two. All right, the next question. While working behind the scenes on chapter three, was there anything that you wanted to see in the game that didn't make it in? Oh, gosh. I can't think of anything specific. Actually, I can think of something, but it's NDA. <laughs> <laughs> Would love to talk about it, but I can't. But I guess short answer is yes. <laughs> but take that. also, I kind of I kind of wish that... And, and this wasn't like necessarily something that was planned for it, but I wish was kind of more of a thing was the bigger bodies of the other critters. I know we got to see Catnap and we got to see half of Dog Day, um, but I would have loved to see the other smiling critters, even if it was just like their dead bodies or something. I don't know. I, I just want to see what they look like. I know there's somewhere circling on the internet, there's like a like a concept art of a bigger body's um, Bobby Bear hug. I think that was official. I think that was by Amber in the book. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's in the book. Yeah. Yeah, so... I would love to see, like, in-game, I wish they had had them all in there in some capacity, but, you know, say la vie. Yeah, I can agree on that, yeah. I think people would have wanted to see Dog Day's full body instead of just half. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. And we expect Chapter 4 being the scariest chapter yet of the Poppy series? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I think it's already been said multiple times in interviews, but it, it's going to be the darkest um, what I've seen, like in the, uh, in like the concept art for the environments and the characters, like it's just insane. The the unique avenues that the that the dev team and the design team have taken for Chapter Four, and I'm so excited for people to see it. But yeah, for sure, going to be the scariest, the darkest. Yeah, I, I think I remember Zach saying in an interview saying that they wanted to go down a, a more darker route for Poppy, which yeah, is pretty cool. I love that. And if you really think about it, chapter one started on the floor, like the top floor. Then chapter two, you go to the game station. Chapter three, you go down into the play care. You're getting deeper and deeper into like the bowels of, of Playtime Co. Every every chapter. And at the end of chapter three, you're going down an elevator. So you're only getting deeper into the into the secrets of, of Playtime Co. from here on out. So for sure going to be the darkest. I hope those the workers that built that place on the ground got paid well. Warren Bach construction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they worked so hard. Go oh, all the way down deep. They're pretty much close <laughs> to the core. The I core. know, right? The core of the earth. You'll just like end up going all the way through the earth and pop out on the other side. Literally, yeah. It's actually chapter five spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> you pop up on the other side of the earth, it's just another yeah. another factory. <laughs> okay, next question is a funny one. Oh god. How did you feel about the hour of troll that happened on January twelfth this year? That was when I, you know, caused Panic or a lot of false hype in the community about a new trailer for Chapter 3. Oh, God. Nice. That was, I think, maybe the second or third time I kicked you from the program. <laughs> I had only known you for, like, two months at that point. I'm like, what is this guy doing right now? <laughs> that was just the taste. The taste the, the what, what, you were, what you were doing was matching my energy. <laughs> oh, God. No. That was, that was, that was funny. It was truly, like, it was funny. There was somebody who messaged me. Um, I can't remember who it was, but they were just like, isn't this a partner in crime? And I'm like, yeah. And, and, it was, and he, they were like, it, did you tell them there was a trailer coming? I'm like, no, he's just making stuff up for fun. <laughs> and they're like, why? And I'm like, 
because I do that. And I remember you took part of it too. You're like, there you go. I there's did. a trigger. <laughs> oh god, no. Oh gosh. It was it was funny. Maybe don't do it again. <laughs> That's what I said. Like, I hope that it didn't cause any issues behind the scenes. No, 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 no. I nobody got in trouble. People were just asking me, like, what is he doing? I'm like, don't worry about it. It's fine. Meanwhile, I'm also causing chaos. <laughs> I even made a fake apology video. People thought it was legit. <laughs> so I, was, I love the people who like didn't watch the full video but commented underneath it and they were like we accept your apology nice and blah 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 and i'm like you guys clearly didn't watch all the way past minute two like i think there was some people that were like yo we you know it's okay we accept your apology and then this is edited it said oh never mind it's a troll <laughs> yes you're supposed to watch the video first i just couldn't That's do it so anymore I, I just started breaking down laughing and yeah <laughs> I had to prepare myself. I'm like, okay, just act. Just try to not try not to laugh because that did take a few takes. Honestly, you did a great. I mean, like, I knew <laughs> that it was that it was crap, but like, <laughs> uh, I like going into. It, I was like, dang, he's really holding a straight face through this whole thing. I'm really proud of him right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I can say that was my my on screen acting reel. <laughs> <laughs> and now for the final question. What is your favorite part about being the community manager for Mob? Oh gosh, I feel like that's like picking your favorite child. But <laughs> I'm mean, gonna have to say, like talking with you guys, like not only just the partners in crime, but also people on on Twitter and and on Discord. Um, I really like engaging. I think I really like the the moments I get to engage in a chaotic manner because, as I said before, I thrive in the chaos. Like. I love when I just say like something super out of left field or random in the discord and everyone's like, Shh, shut up. Tyler's here. Like, let's see what he has to right. say. And then I just dip <laughs> like, it's so funny, but like moments like those are just so to me. Um, I just, you guys make it so easy because you guys love it so much and, and, and everybody eats it up. And so it's just like, it, it makes my day. Like when I'm having a bad day, I know if I go into the discord, it'll, it'll cheer me up. So oh, I come um, on. definitely engaging with that. Unless nice is there, then I'm just like, uh, <laughs> oh, God, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always lurking the chat. So. <laughs> it's fun messing with everybody, including the devs and other partners, you know, it's always fun. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, I, I love when sometimes <laughs> I'll get a little chaotic and then one of the partners in crime will message me and they're like, hey, can I play along? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Like usually it's like or you that are in my DMs like, hey, can I say this? And I'm like, go for it. I ask you, I'm like, am I gonna get in trouble for this? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I can say this, but you know, I'm not I'm not doing anything bad, but I still wanna ask. I might just be lying a little bit or telling the truth in a different way. That's the thing. I think <laughs> that's another thing. This is why I also hired Amanda because Amanda's exactly like me in that in that way. Like Amanda will just go in and be like there's an announcement tomorrow and the announcement is, or there's an announcement today, but the announcement is that there's announcement today. Oh my God. I remember that. <laughs> I was like, yes, yeah. that was like her second day messaged me. And she was like, was that okay? And I'm like, I'm so proud of you. The announcement is that there's an announcement. <laughs> yeah. When I talked to her, she's very sweet. Yeah. She's really yeah, cool. Yeah. Amanda's great. I love her. Good bean. Wait, can I ask you a question? Can, can I turn this? This is now Tyler interviewing Nyes. Yes, please go ahead. You asked me, you asked me what is my favorite part of being the community manager for Mob. So what is your favorite part? This is a two-parter. A, what is your favorite part about being a part of the Partners in Crime program? But B, what is your favorite part about being the most annoying part of my day? <laughs> I know, I know that's true. But, okay. So the first part was my favorite part of being in, in the partner program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, I can't say that. I can't say that. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, NDA. No, no. Just like <laughs> reasons. I'm like, oh, no, I can't say that. I can't say that. You know, personally, <laughs> I'm kidding. But just annoying you. I'm kidding. <laughs> But no, um, <laughs> but no, um, getting to meet other people. Um, I met so many other partners who are also content creators throughout this year. Actually, my my partners in crime one year anniversary just passed, and throughout the whole year, I've met a lot of partners who I still talk to today. When we and we you know get together, we play, we even make videos sometimes. But yeah, I believe that's the best part—just meeting new people, 
you know, getting to know the devs, even, you know, getting to know the marketing team and yeah, just mostly partners. And the second part, I don't regret a, I regret a thing. <laughs> this is nothing. Hey, no. <laughs> I always try to give you a laugh per day. <laughs> Thank you. One per day. Yeah. If you're having a bad day, I'm just there. Like you're paying your dues or else I kick you out for the ninth time. Right. Dude, people actually believe that sometimes. Oh my God. That's so funny. No, the best one was the, <laughs> you used the, the black light on the ARG letter <laughs> that I sent. That was so good. I wanted to use real, real highlighters, but like, I was like, nah, I don't want to ruin this piece of art. This, Im- this immaculate piece of art that I definitely don't have 300 copies sitting next to my desk right now of. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh, I did. I did actually have one question, a fun one I just thought of right now. I think people, okay. I think people asked me this a little bit. How was it like meeting for the first time? Like, I'm real. I'm a, I'm a real person. <laughs> You're a real guy. I thought you were just AI this whole time. I was like, I'm just gonna find a computer in in Universal Studios. No, it was great. A very advanced AI. <laughs> no, it was cool. I was like, uh, I remember you were like, yeah, I'm gonna be there that day at, at Halloween Horror Nights. So I was like, oh, cool. Like that would be nice to like be able to you know meet in person. It was great. And honestly, and after I remember you messaged me after, and you're like, yeah, we spoke for like 20 minutes, and I was like, that felt like maybe five. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh god, your sisters were just kind of like sitting there waiting for us to shut up, <laughs> right? And my sister, was, my sister, well, yeah, my sister said uh, the first time she she saw you come up to me and we started talking, she said he gave off super you vibes, super you vibes is uh, <laughs> god, that was like the worst thing I've heard my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not bad. He just like she's just saying he reminded me of you so much. No, 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 that's bad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's so funny. No, it was great to meet you for real. Like, I, I wonder how many people thought that was Photoshop first, but it was great to meet you for for sure. Yeah, same. Um, I don't think people thought it was fake. I think people just commented more about our teeth, apparently, or whatever. Oh, that was messed up. Like, sorry, we stood in orange lighting. Like, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> that was so messed up. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wanted to do like a, or I forgot to maybe do like a troll video about us you know doing like a recording of ourselves saying nda you know like as a joke <laughs> oh my gosh but yeah um actually am, am, am i the, like the first partner ever that you met so far um i wait i have to think about it. i think so yeah i think you're the only one who kind of lives close so i think so but i do get to meet another one at new york comic-con this coming weekend i'm sure this will air either during or after that but um so that'll be exciting i get to meet nether kings um and i think maybe one or two other people are going to show up. So but you were the first. Yes. Well, hopefully you guys will do something for Momocon next year. If you guys can. I don't know if we'll be able to do anything for Momocon, but I would love to go just to like meet. Cause I know that's where like, it's basically partners in crime and poppy playtime convention. <laughs> I know even a lot of mob employees go there. So it'd be cool to just go because I work from home. And so I don't really get, I, I, I think I haven't even met my actual boss in person. I've only met like, from the mob team, I've only met like Alan, a few of the devs. Um, I met Zach and Seth in person, but like for the most part, I don't. I have not met like Amber in person, Toby, Amanda, my boss. Like I've never met any of those guys in person. So I feel like Momocon might be a great opportunity to do that. Oh, for sure. Hopefully, I get to meet Amber over there. Toby, I don't know. Hopefully, yeah, he'll, he'll stay in in South America forever. He's not traveling up here. <laughs> Where is he, Argentina? He actually, he's the actual AI. Yeah, for sure. Especially <laughs> from what we talk about. Yeah, he's an AI. I swear. <laughs> all right. That was all the questions I had for you today. Thank you again for hopping on. Finally. Yeah, finally. God, thanks for inviting me. Finally. Jeez. It only took people requesting for me to be here. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be Amber first, Toby, and then you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Put the two favorites in front of me. Ah, uh, no, no, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, thank you for having me. <laughs> of course, of course. Hopefully we get to talk again or meet again sometime in the future. It'd be cool. Yeah, for sure. Do poppy stuff, you know, or just Likewise. Disney stuff in general. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Later, skaters. Nice is no longer in the partner program. Goodbye. Click.